Welcome to the Tuesday, November 21, 2023 Pasco Public Facilities District Board Meeting. Debbie, if you'd please go ahead and do roll call. Yes. Carolyn Bowdish. Yes. Leonard Dietrich. Yes. Murray Gillespie. Spencer Gillette. Here. And Mark Morissette. Here. Good afternoon and welcome to the Pasco Public Facilities District Board Meeting. Agenda packets are available on the City of Pasco's website at www.pasco-wa.gov under the Public Facilities District Board webpage. This meeting is also being televised live on PSC TV channel 191 on Spectrum Cable in Pasco and Richland and is streamlined on the City's Facebook page, website, YouTube channel, and Microsoft Teams. Lastly, the public may submit their comments and or questions by contacting the Pasco Public Facilities District Executive Director or the Pasco City Clerk. Thank you. Debbie? Yes. Uh, this is uh, the public comments period. Uh, this item is provided to allow the public an opportunity to bring items to the attention of the Pasco Public Facilities District Board or to express an opinion on an issue. Its purpose is not to provide a venue for debate or for posing of questions with the expectation of immediate response. Some questions require consideration by the board over time and after a deliberative process with input from a number of different sources. Some questions are best directed to staff members who can access specific information. Public comments are normally limited to three minutes by each speaker. Those with lengthy messages are invited to summarize their comments and or submit written information for consideration to the PPFD board outside of normal formal meetings. Thank you. Uh, I've received no notification of any questions today. Hearing none, then all those in favor of approving the minutes from October 17th, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Hearing none, the motion carries. Claims approval. You go ahead and help us with this, Darcy. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, board members. Uh, we have a packet that uh, has all your financial information together tonight or this afternoon. And the final page of that stapled package is the expense ledger detail mm -hmm. listing. Um, that shows what spending occurred in the month of October, what bills were paid in the month of October. Um, they uh, are related to advertising, legal expenses and services, uh, organizational services and professional service, and uh, included on that expense, le expense ledger detail listing is the, the vendor and the purpose for the payment uh, for you to review. Can I ask a quick question, Darcy? Yes, sir. What is the interlocal agreement c compensation agreed to by the city? Is that 10000 a month? It is um, $10,000 a month, if I recall correctly. And then if you are 9500 is that true? 9500 And then we do keep track of our time uh, across That's added city on employees. Top. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. So tell me this, Darcy, were you giving us the monthly expenses report to approve? You were? I care to approve it. That's what we're requesting. Okay. So then um, whoever reads the motion to approve it, if I'm reading this correct, Darcy, the number, we should draw a line through the 139000 and put in there 149000 Yes. Okay. So whoever reads the motion, if you please, would What's note that. What's the additional 10 for? I, I don't know. I, I haven't Do you compared want the total? it to. Huh? Did you want the total? 
Well, when we have the motion, I would suggest that the number that we read as I, part of the motion be the 149,000. Spence is asking what's the change from 139 to 149. One of the expenses was not on the original uh, or did not add up correctly. So this, that's why you have an amended report. So oh, I see. you want me to read the but total we don't, off for we you? We didn't get the expense report in the addition. The, the, here on the very back page. Oh, the back page. I can't see it there. Thank you. Yes. Spence, you want to go ahead? I would move to approve the October 2023 PPFD expenses in the amount of $149,442.19. Is there? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> To approve the October 2023 Pasco Public Facilities District expenses in the amount of $149,442.19. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, then we'll go ahead and vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion is read. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Motion carries. So financial report item five, does that mean we've already taken care of that one too, Darcy, or you want to tell a us little, some more there? A little more to share with you. All right, please if, do. If you're willing to listen. I'm um, willing. On that same packet is a balance sheet and a performance budget report. And um, I was hopeful to kind of uh, walk through those with the expense ledger report just so you uh, can see where the numbers are coming from and how they're being reflected in the reports each month. Um, I know in the past we've kind of done some, well, when we started down this process, there wasn't much of a budget that was um, filled out for the PFD. So now that's uh, getting more in place and, and usable to guide uh, decision making and we're thankful for that work that you all have done and then um, also we were trying to kind of go on a cash flow uh, and anticipatory view of um, re revenues and expenses so you could gauge what was you could do since there was not much history to rely on so but that also is causing some reporting issues because uh, at the city level we don't uh, accrue revenues and expenses quite the same as in the private in private industry so we are returning to regular reports that the city financial system produces which are the two things that you have in front of you based on through activity um, at the end of october uh, 31st 2023 and so as we were just looking at that expense listing the that told the 149,442 dollars that you approved you can see that same number on the budget performance report and it's highlighted in orange there's a couple numbers but it's in the current month's transactions table or column and so that's where you can see how it's running through the expense ledger and then also, um, this, of course, budget performance report is supposed to show you revenues and expenses that have occurred during the month. Um, and then as you look at the balance sheet report, you can see those numbers again. So you can see how the impact of that activity is affecting the balance sheet. And at the bottom of the balance sheet, you'll see those fund revenues and fund expenses detailed. And those are the numbers on the performance report. Um, and... Uh, we close typically at year end. So to make that balance, if you were interested in seeing that, you would take the fund balance of $229,712 and then add the annual up to this period in time activity, the revenues and expenditures that are highlighted in orange there. And all those things, three things together will offset the um, difference between assets and liabilities above, but I just wanted to make sure I knew we had a couple times where looking at reports, um, there was some uncertainty of of how they were being created and the information that was being presented, and I wanted to make sure you all felt comfortable with the, you know, that we walked through this and you could see the numbers tying as that with the activity. And I'd be glad to answer questions if you have any. Darcy, any questions for Darcy? Darcy, so as of now, as of the end of October, 
we have a little over 2.6 in the bank. Yes, yes, and then, of course, I'm the the there's a receivable. So when that gets paid, you'll get that cash of additional money of one thousand seven hundred dollars and a payable of nine thousand six hundred and seventy seven. So, but yes, there's two point six million dollars in the cash account for PFD. Yeah. Yes. More questions. If not, we'll go to item number six, report from reports from committees, design and construction committee. Welcome to the meeting, Marie. Is there anything you'd like to um, tell us about from design and construction? Sure. Um, we received the proposals from the three down selected um, potential design builders and we are in the process of evaluating them. They um, are very, very good, very high quality proposals. So we will be able to make a recommendation um, for award at next month's meeting. That's it? That's it. Very good, thank you. Audit and Finance Committee, we don't have anything to report. So let's go on to item number seven, old business ambassadors, Marie and Matt. Mind, I'll start this off. Uh, Marie and I met uh, here in the past month and outlined what's in front of you, a slightly revised version of something you got in your packet uh, for a, we'll call this a quick to activate uh, ad hoc uh, ambassador committee is the term I think we've come up with. Uh, the idea being that it'd be an advisory board that would be a sounding board for uh, certainly the board on a variety of amenities since that'll be a subject coming up after we pick design to the design builder uh, I think it's also hope that to be able to sp uh, speak on some of the fiduciary responsibilities the PPFD is am Ambassadors in the community in a variety of ways also using as a sounding board uh, That things that the PFD does and shared in the public uh, additional uh, sounding board of, of, of besides yourself uh, I think it's also hoped that whoever is on this committee would be involved, especially in the public outreach and design phase of the portion of the project, uh, and then also in the construction phase when we move into that. Uh, kind of generally, the idea is that if we, we as a uh, PFD, uh, involve these community members and a board, uh, share our information, they might be able to be extensions of the PFD. Uh, in community outreach discussions, whether or not they go to a Kiwanis meeting or maybe their uh, their churches or their or their schools and that sort of thing, um, and then also probably a thought too that uh, as as board members uh, we finish this project, I think there's contemplation of who's who's the PFD members after that. So maybe members of this committee could eventually become uh, PFD board members, for example. Uh, the makeup of it, my suggestion in talking with Marie is that we keep this simple to begin with. Uh, maybe three members, uh, that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's just a suggestion. Um, maybe a general member and, a, and a, maybe an aquatic enthusiast, maybe it would make sense to go ahead and embrace that there is a phase two of the project and involve somebody who has some knowledge or experience in aquatics facilities or competitive pools. And then also a thought, uh, in, and I did reach out to the Pasco School District, uh, there are enthusiastic students uh, that potentially could become uh, an, an uh, important part of this committee. And I did confirm with the school district superintendent that the Pasco School District would be uh, uh, helpful in, in, in be able to provide a member of, of committee. Committee. Um, there's also, besides maybe the three new members that you pick up, uh, I'd imagine this group uh, probably initially includes uh, also myself, uh, Heath from Win Winoha, uh, maybe the PF PFD liaison that's assigned to city council, and also uh, maybe a parks board or a member of the parks board, uh, the existing with the city of Pasco. The idea is that uh, gr ground them and that you bring them up to speed on what the uh, PFD does, what it's planning, mm -hmm. and where it's going. Uh, and, and then maybe meet periodically to make sure that uh, they're updated and can, can speak intelligently on that. The idea is that uh, we do have some names already. Uh, we can solicit applications. Uh, we do have a social media presence. We can ask for people that are interested. And I think also important uh, note to 
you would want a committee to reflect maybe the demographics of Pasco, uh, whether or not it be geographically located across the city, uh, race, racial or ethnicity, cultural possibly, age and gender are, are thoughts to think about uh, uh, too. Uh, important point in this, and I say it again, this would be an ad hoc committee. It would be a temporary one that would serve until construction is completed or ribbon cutting, so to speak. Uh, the, uh, and if you do include, say, a students, uh, making sure that they were, uh, you would be able to accommodate a PSD student's time. They might not be available later in the evening, for example, or may need either to be transported to where the meeting is at or have a meeting where at the school district, that sort of thing. Uh, and a note, too, this would be a volunteer position with no, uh, no compensation. I think some of the question marks still remain is how do we solicit to make sure and get applicants uh, for these positions and then also how to uh, if there are multiple applications I maybe how to narrow them down and then who specifically approves it uh, I uh, talking with a couple members to uh, whether or not the board approves the members or whether or not you want to have a committee for example the admin and finance committee uh, do, uh, do the approval or the solicitation. Uh, I think that's up in the air. Those in broad strokes are, I think, what uh, Marie uh, helped me understand, and, and then I've added a couple of tweaks and also assistance with PASCO staff. We did have a talk with it when, last week when we do our agenda setting meetings to make sure that it passes legal muster and, and, and uh, uh, suggested ideas too from uh, helpful city staff. Uh, I've also uh, asked Marie for her thoughts too, because a lot of this is uh, uh, her, her thoughts. And I think also extension to, I know Leonard uh, has also talked about this as well, and I want to make sure that we've hit the right note, but also not make this so burdensome that it does take 30 or 60 or 90 days to, to enact, but we might be able to hit the ground running when we do choose a design builder here in the, in the first of the year. Um, first of all, you mentioned that it would be, it would, the audit and finance committee would super, would meet with these folks, is because it doesn't really mention that in here how that comes back up to the board. Um, I, I I think there there are two probably two options. One is whether or not the board is comfortable with having the audit finance committee choose members, or whether or not to use the audit finance committee to solicit. Uh, interest in and read through applications and bring a recommendation back to the board probably the latter makes probably makes more sense uh, use the admin and finance committee to, to, to start it but have the full board uh, commit to it yeah, I think my take on it is that the committee works through the minutia of what is there and they get a, a pr pretty in-depth conversation with a group of people and then what they do is come up with a recommendation and they bring that to the board so that the board has communication with whomever is going to be there and then we approve it to take some of the the uh, the weight off from just the two people that are doing it so uh, uh, we're acting as a board I, I would like to see it come through some committee structure and right now the three members are appointed by the board and its list of slate or initial candidates can be provided by Gillespie and Watkins. Substitute, actually let me back up just a second and I actually suggest design and construction committee instead of say exactly. Watkins and Gillespie. Specifically I would say the design and construction committee would be the better. Instead committee. of two individuals because we could come and go but the committee stays. Okay, thank you. So you'll you'll correct that? What, I, I'm Mr. making Chairman, it's here. in the motion yeah. at the bottom of that page. Okay, but I want to make sure that I know these things. And then the other thing that, with regards to the Pasco High student, and I think the school board works it to where it's a senior, and then if we're two years out, then that person will graduate. And so how do we... Actually, the, uh, when I did a public outreach session in May, uh, I was invited by the school superintendent, and the superintendent does have a group of I think mostly juniors and seniors, but there might even be some sophomores on there. Uh, so I would uh, I would ask to have somebody that might be able to last for the duration 
of the project, which is two, two years. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure they would be able to accommodate uh, representative for that term. And I'm okay with that, but I think there's kind of an age difference between a 17 and an 18 year old. I would rather see the senior as opposed to the junior myself, mm -hmm. but you work it through. Well, I, I guess there's an option too. If uh, expectation, if you do a senior, then they'd be off after a year and they'd be replaced then a year right. later uh, by a, a senior. And I think we could also request uh, the, the superintendent provide something like that. Okay. I see my kind of thought on it was like the president of that class because he's been they have been elected by the body the student body to represent them but that may not fit in what they're able to do so I kind of scrapped that idea but about that a little bit too and that uh, in, in I think that I think we could agree that superintendent would be a good judge of somebody that would be able to be helpful they they are they're very involved in this uh, in, in in this project At this point, then, Matt, does the motion and what you have written above there do they match, or are you going to? Well, it, I think that? fairly close. If, if I would modify this to say where it says committee makeup and say three member uh, three members appointed by PFD board, I insert the word PFD list of uh, list or slate of initial can candidates can be provided by design and construction committee. As opposed to Gillespie and Watkins, uh, I think with, with a substitution with that, it gets you to where I'm hearing the discussion headed. Did you get that down, Debbie? Good. I, and I would provide the clerk a revision of this if you were to want to make a motion tonight to adopt this. So are we okay with the motion tonight? Is might as well. Yeah. I mean, another you got your 60-day rule, Leonard. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why stretch it to 90? We can do that. So okay, would somebody please read the motion? Just add the word amended right before, uh, uh, in between the report in that first sentence. Just say amended. That'd be Brad. Right. So, uh, where it says, I uh, move to initiate ad hoc uh, Pasco Public Facilities District Ambassador Committee as outlined in the amended report. You're on the second line there, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, I thought he said he made the motion. It, it would probably yeah. <laughs> help to read the motion. I move to initiate the ad hoc Pasco Public Facilities District Ambassador Committee as outlined in the amended report for the executive director to solicit applications for membership, including known interested individuals and via social media, for the design and construction committee to interview and choose three initial members and periodically report to the board progress of the ad hoc committee. Actually, as it gets read, there, there is, does need to be another modification to that because I think it's important for the board to choose. So if you, if. So does Spence withdraw that motion? That I don't you, think What are you can. talking about doing here? Nobody, okay. sec nobody second, please. Yes. Yes, it dies for lack of second. Okay, good. May, Mr. Chair. Uh, if the motion were to read, I move to initiate the ad, ad hoc Pasco Public Facilities District Ambassador Committee as outlined in the amended report with the executive director to solicit applications for membership, including known interested individuals and via social media, for the design and construction committee to interview and recommend three initial members, and the board to approve the recommendation and to report to the board. Uh, report to the board progress of the ad hoc committee, I think that would get what you're looking for. Sound all right, Spence? Yeah. Are you ready? Can you read me the last sentence of that again? The last portion of the sentence on the fifth. Recommend three in initial members. Uh, recommend three initial mem members, semicolon, the, uh, the board to approve the recommended members semicolon, and periodically report to the board progress of the ad hoc committee. I 
Council members and the board to approve. Ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, I move to initiate the ad hoc Pasco Public Facilities District Ambassador Committee as outlined in the amended report for the Executive Director to solicit applications for membership, including known interested individuals, and recommend, oh, known individuals and, and via social media for the Design and Construction Committee to interview and recommend three initial members for the board to approve these recommended members and and report on their progress and report occasionally on the progress of the ad hoc committee. I think that captures what I had modified. Captures the good words. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to um, to initiate the ad hoc Pasco Public Facilities District Ambassador Committee. All those are. Is there any? Pardon me. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say no. <clears throat> so there are no noes. So the motion carries. I will endeavor in the next week or two to solicit applications and ask to the uh, that the uh, design and construction committee meet if there is a large number of applications to, to go through those. All right, very good. Item number 8A, Matt and Monica. So, Monica, do you want to kind of take the lead in this? For, no, you don't. Start this one off as well. Okay. Um, this is one uh, been working <laughs> extensively with City of Pasco Finance, and they've been extremely helpful. We do, do by the way, have on board or uh, 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 chosen a bond attorney and a underwriter. There's a third piece to the puzzle, though, that we need to have, and we wish we had done it earlier, but we are doing it now, and it shouldn't cause an undue delay. Uh, we do need what we believe to be a municipal advisor. This is sort of the equivalent of Winnehoff from a perspective for bonding. Uh, and it is a distinct and slightly different function than either underwriter or bond attorney. And I think uh, finance will help me out that this is a fairly standard process when you are going to go get a $40 million or so loan. Um, it's the same principle as the one that you okayed several months ago. Uh, we, of course, have to go through a competitive process for that. I don't. Uh, I would anticipate uh, that we get a response, and if we get more than one response for this position, uh, we'd activate, again, the, uh, the Audit and Finance Committee to evaluate those uh, and then recommend uh, or then uh, choose, based off qualifications, a municipal advisor. Uh, and I, actually, either Darcy or uh, Monica, if you have any other thoughts, the utility of a financial uh, municipal uh, advisor. Can I interrupt here for just a sec? Could you specifically talk about how these this person fits in with the other two choices that were made? I, think that's what I, I can do that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, we, just from the city's perspective, uh, this year issued debt, and we had an uh, underwriter, a uh, financial uh, municipal advisor who is a financial advisor that um, specializes in finance as opposed to necessarily just accounting, and, uh, of course, our bond council. And the... The benefit of a financial advisor or the municipal advisor is they have a fiduciary duty to work in the best interest of the city. Um, and so they're, they kind of work as a go-between and helped us make uh, decisions about the term of the, the debt. Um, they uh, forecast costs and both um, expenses for issuing debt and costs associated with um, like debt service on the bonds and just really help guide the process and, and, and provide a specialty that um, is unique that isn't part of my strong suit for sure. Um, I don't issue bonds frequently and um, I'm not part of the bond market and they are so they're very helpful. They walked us through um, and were um, very beneficial in guiding our work with the rating agency um, and so very um, I, I've appreciated their assistance greatly. So. 
identification on this position, they are uh, sit separately from the bonding agency. And they will give you, Matt, us recommendations as to what type of bond mm -hmm. and what we should be looking for Correct. In, in this process. Right. They give uh, information through in the beginning part of the process making to help uh, the PFD board make decisions and then also during, uh, you know, getting it all the way to the finish line of debt being issued and then uh, do uh, provide financial information about how the bond was structured, amortization tables, um, all kinds of information and, and are a good resource. Then when the competitive side of the bond agencies come in, this person will be able to look at those and say, okay, these meet the criteria that we're looking for, and this looks to be the most beneficial for this project. Correct. Okay. So it's okay to describe it as like the owner's rep equivalent for this bond? I think that's a fair assessment, yes. Okay. They, they represent us and give our the PFD, excuse me, and give good advice on the financial side of um, various decision points that you get to evaluate. So. so I do want to mention, Monica, we appreciate you being at that meeting. It was very helpful. It was very enlightening. So thank you. A question, uh, one way or the other on this, on the cost of this, is that person typically a percentage of what the bond capacity is? That has been my experience is that it was related, the, the cost was related to the issuance amount of the debt. Okay. Um, so I don't know how often that varies and how it might be. We have, of course, since we have years of, of uh, activity, we've had many bond issuances that have worked through uh, a fin financial advisor and kind of the same group of people um, across the bond council advisor underwriter. And um, so we kind of have a little bit of a template of what happens. Um, so I don't know exactly what to expect or how to uh, provide uh, any. I, I'm just trying to understand yes. that when we put out this bond right. out there, that this person and the bond agency all take a pick a percentage they as they move through the system. That is true. At, at the end of that, I mean, you can pay, what my experience has, has been is the organization can pay uh, invoices or it can be paid by the proceeds of the debt. So, but. It, Mr. Dietrich, I think it's also fair to say that as we get into the process for bonding, that this position, the underwriter and bond counsel uh, I would like and would work with the finance department to make sure that we provide a summary uh, estimate of, of those when that when that does come up that becomes a little bit more clear. I'd also note too if you uh, several uh, board members did attend the conference uh, that's been a month or two now uh, ago there was a presentation by a municipal advisor uh, at, at one of those days and I would imagine that particular person actually bidding on this job as an example. I think it was Northwest Mutual. Uh, I'm not getting the name exactly it's right. Municipal Advisors. I Northwest, Northwest Municipal, Municipal Advisors. advisors. The, I don't know if I made this clear enough earlier to the one important difference with the financial advisor or the municipal advisors, they are do have hold a duty to get the best deal or have that fiduciary duty to the board, whereas the underwriter does not have that. They're just selling and, and helping uh, sell the bonds and issue the debt, but not do not have that responsibility. So, all right, very good. It's safe to say, as long as we pass the uh, 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 the liabilities out as far as we can. <laughs> all right. Is there any further discussion? If not, would somebody please? Make the motion to approve resolution 2023-13. I move to approve resolution number 2023-13, approving the posting of the Municipal Financial Advisor Services for the issuance of securities request for qualifications on November 26, 2023. Selection, negotiation, and further authorize the PPFD executive director to execute the contract documents. Is there a second? Second. 
So it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2023-13 for the Municipal Financial Advisor Services. Is there any, any discussion? Hearing none, then we'll go ahead and vote on the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. The motion carries. Darcy, I'm guessing you're going to help us with the proposed budget. Is that correct? I am. I think that we are not. We're going to, I don't recall the date that um, it's say, going to come back again. to the board. It's going to come back to the board for approval um, at a later date, and I think that's remains. So this is just an information item at this time? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Is that enough? Okay. So then this will be something that we'll approve on the December 19th board meeting. Uh, or the, whatever meeting we're going to have on December, we'll be talking Sometime about that. Sometime December. Yeah, and just there, there, there was, there, I know that your packet got one version uh, of to, to adopt it tonight, but since we didn't have a formal resolution or a motion in front of you that thought was discussion tonight, uh, I believe that this, there is no significant change from the budget from my under, what I understand. And assuming there isn't, this probably should be a fairly simple issue to handle at uh, the meeting that we do in December. Yes. If you do review the budget and have questions, though, please, please feel free to reach out and um, we will provide all the information we can. Was this all right? <laughs> Don't worry, Jesse. Someday you're going to get a turn. You'll wait till then, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Item number nine: Executive Director Report. Matt Watkins. Go ahead, uh, Matt. Well, I would just note, uh, Jesse. So wonderfully, last month uh, re reported about a mascot. Uh, he, I believe he was seen spotted in the halls escorting another mascot around. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there the the Grinch was wandering around the halls today. Mm -hmm. So. So if you want to ask Jesse about mascots, he's, he's always good about that. <laughs> uh, two things of significant report. Uh, 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 myself and Mr. Morissette did attend a council meeting. That's the first time, actually, since I've been executive director of the PFD, uh, did report back to city council. I think the session uh, went well. Uh, I would just note the two. It was the night before the election, so the uh, there will be a significant change in the council member makeup uh, with, I believe, three new positions starting in the new year. Uh, questions were, uh, were, were, were good and fairly simple to answer. Uh, I think that it's uh, fair to say the council is eager and awaiting uh, the PFD for the next step to get into the design build process and kind of gave a little heads up of uh, the amenities and the things that are going to be happening and seeing more activity from the PFD uh, via the design process. Uh, that's a summary of the, of the report. Uh, Mr. Morissette, you have any other thoughts that you had about oh, the well. meeting? Thank you, you did good. Yeah, I, I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to watch it on either Monday night or on a replay on there, but I will tell you that that Matt did one heck of a job. It, it was it, it was truly flawless. I, I really appreciated the way the presentation and the way the acceptance was. Now we're going to have members change up there, but you did an excellent job. Thank you, Leonard. Appreciate that. Yes. Social media update? Or and that's a good question, sure. uh, Mr. Watkins. It, you know, as we've gone through, as I've sat in on some of these uh, um, design and design committee meetings, I one of the things that we're seeing is that land acquisition and bonding are going to be some of the things that are going to be things that are going to you know kind of be the hurdles to get over initially. Where are we at? I know where we're at as far as bonding goes, but where are we at as far as land acquisition goes? Great. I, I debated on putting it on there. Uh, for purposes of a public meeting, I would say that we are close. We've had a challenge with uh, some traffic flow in the Broadmoor area. City of Pasco staff are working diligently to resolve that. Uh, at the same time, I've also engaged a uh, I call it a negotiator to work on some of the back end stuff. Uh, there, the, I think there's a draft purchase and sales agreement that's uh, working its way through a process. 
Uh, generally speaking, I think that you're going to find the PFD in the city working on negotiating the final land details uh, out of the Broadmoor for six to ten acres for a PFD and then also what the city might need in, in that sort of combination. Are you able at this time to tell us what they're asking per square foot for that ground? Uh, what actually I've got, there has been a, uh, and Jesse might, uh, if he has some thought on this, or uh, I'll correct me if I'm wrong, but the city of Pasco, I believe, negotiated a $7 a square foot option for up to a certain amount of acreage. And while that doesn't extend specifically to the PFD, I think there might be, it certainly was contemplated before uh, the vote and everything that the city and the PFD are working together. So I think you'll get a favorable rate for a significant portion of the property. But then again, that's also dated, so there might be some discussions. Uh, maybe there's been some inflation since that. That, At that price will be allowed, we'll probably be able to negotiate for a bigger piece of ground than we but initially thought. Possibly, but don't think that seven dollars is locked in. Uh, oh, it, I, I it, get it. it it is a bit in flux, but but that agreement, I think you're going to find that there's some goodwill there, and we're going to want to capitalize Perfect. on that. We want lots of goodwill. <laughs> Question in regards to the uh, proposed location and traffic flow. That is a concern that has been demonstrated in the past. And is the city getting, is city engineering getting closer on that? Because that can really mess the whole thing up. And that's going to be a major block. Enough on that discussion as far as the, uh, the uh, infrastructure and, and traffic movement. And then the other one, it needs to make sure that when we're talking to potential contractors and design people, uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't want to get into a situation to where we are saying, here's what we're going to do, going to do, and it all falls apart because of so, uh, something we have no control over, uh, then we have to pay a penalty. Uh, let me, uh, I'm going to take a stab at part of this, and also I think might ask Keith uh, from Winaha to, on the latter part of it. Number one, uh, the traffic thing, that's a timely, because actually just before this meeting, I was watching the wonderful YouTube video that the engineering department, or excuse me, public works department, uh, Maria Serra, uh, was, uh, put up about the Broadmoor project, which I believe kicked off about a week ago, uh, including a design for uh, not only what will happen on the Road 100 Broadmoor area, but also the freeway and the interchange. So I believe the city is actually kicking off the project that's going to uh, help the traffic. I'm not a PASCO person, uh, so I can't exactly summarize all those details, but that's that's been first and foremost, and that even carries over from when I was also a council member and mayor too. So that, that process for upgrading Broadmoor is, we're in the middle of that starting right now. Uh, hopefully that is gonna help alleviate some of the traffic concerns that I think are gonna manifest. Is that, is that a fair answer to the first part, Mr. Dietrich? It's a fair answer, yes. Okay. Yes. And I'll, also send, I'll send a link to that uh, to board members, too, that, that video, so that you can see that. Second part of it, uh, the question of how property is going to fit into when we get into the design-build process. I think it's fair to say that during the what we call the proprietary meetings, uh, when we met with each of the three shortlisted, we talked about that as a as a risk, and not only did they understand it, they embraced it and included uh, responses to that, and I think will be part of the process to, to make sure that we get the, what, we, what we need. Uh, Heath, you got some other thoughts on that? Yeah, I would just say that, uh, just to remind you that that is, uh, that is one of the benefits of the design build process that we're going through, is that we will be able to work through those things with the design builder at the table, and that's going to really uh, save time and energy and possibly result in, in better solutions. So um, anything to do with the timing of getting the property or the or the, the exact site, things like that, we are, once we have a design builder on board, we'll be able to involve them in that. And uh, that should be very efficient and should help us uh, gain traction and get better answers. It's one of the I've been thinking about on the location. Um, this piece of prop, this piece of property, whatever it's one acres or 
12 acres or 100 acres. Makes no difference from that standpoint. But where we'll run into trouble on a cost basis is if, if we choose to be in the primary spot. I'll just point out to the world that this property will not produce any taxes that are notable to the system. So we may very well be happy with a second place in there that will not be as, as we think desirable, but people will get to it and it will work out uh, from a location standpoint. And so uh, if, if we negotiate uh, something that is not, well, I thought it was going to be over here next to whatever, uh, be careful that we don't kill a tax base that can come in alongside of us because there's not going to be a dime come off this thing except for selling hot dogs. Is there any word on when the infrastructure out in that area is going to begin to be developed as far as the main arterials? Um, I did talk with Mr. Worley about that several months ago, so I don't have to the minute information, but the general thought is that the city, I believe, is going to extend uh, Sanderfer from an east to west direction. Uh, if we're locating on Road 108, uh, it's a possibility that we would be the first ones in that area so that we would potentially have to maybe build 108 or uh, our portion of it, or at least for the campus. If then some others might benefit from uh, building out that road, we could also do what's called a late comers agreement. Uh, I think there is a thought that we could be some of the first uh, groups or entities out there, uh, maybe after some initial uh, uh, commercial uh, closer to the Road 100 area. Uh, but uh, there, there is some th thought and discussion on that. So I, you, you're, you're, we're going to have a road to the thing when we get it built two years from now. But we also got to, we got to make sure that we've got it, that it is included in the plans. With that, I think that, so that kind of covered, I, I inserted, call it a 1A, I guess, what we talked about in the report. The other thing I'd like to report is that we do have, on social media, we've had a Facebook page for a while. We've added an Instagram account. Uh, also, uh, Winaha has been helping out, and we've been exercising that, and we'll expect to exercise, exercise the social media a lot more when we do have a designer builder ch uh, chosen. Uh, and in, the, in this case, they're provided me some material and I've copy and pasted it over uh, and uh, am using or am reviewing to make sure that it comports with generally accepted standards for social media. Also been using, John Funfar has been very helpful with a lot of experience on, on City of Pasco. So we're weeding cautiously into the social media sphere uh, on behalf of the P PPFD. I believe that concludes my report this evening, Mr. Morissette. Thank you, Matt. Keith Gardner, it's your turn for the design or builder next step. Yeah, I think most things have been covered uh, by Ms. Gillespie or or, uh, or Matt. Uh, <coughs> but uh, that's what we've been engaged in the selection process for design build. It's going very well. Um, and it's very, very close to completion. The committee is finalizing scoring. And uh, once we finalize scoring, we will um, notify the finalists of the scoring and uh, the committee will notify them of which, uh, these, are, these are the next steps here, which uh, firm was is the highest scoring finalist and that will be the firm that the committee will recommend uh, to the board for approval and, and moving forward with the contract um, in December. Um, and once they those firms are notified, uh, you know the word will be out, um, and that will take place sometime prior to that meeting in December. Um, so at that time, we've talked about maybe a communication going to the board members so that you don't have to hear about the scoring in the uh, through the grapevine. But an official recommendation will not be made until that meeting, and then the board will have to approve it before before a contract could be could be moved forward with. Um, so those are the next steps, exact next steps. And then once we have a uh, approved design builder uh, firm, then we will move forward with, uh, 
with contracts and also the validation period, which uh, is expected to take two to two to three months, uh, depending on how what we negotiate. Um, and that will be where the design builder will validate the program and confirm that uh, that that we can afford what we're trying to afford, and confirm uh, the uh, the feasibility of the project as a construction project. Anyway, um, and then uh, we'll do some also the, some initial uh, programming type design in order to do that validation. So it's very exciting. We'll get right into that. And then from there, it just rolls right into real design work and early procurement and everything else. So we will be, we'll be rolling really quickly after, uh, after that approval in December, uh, assuming we get approval in December. Back into my concern about location because it seems to me very difficult if someone is going to be working on designing something, they need to be to know, they need to know exactly where it's going to fit. And if it doesn't fit, or if they design it and we have to move it, uh, so this contract with the proposed uh, uh, company has got to be close-knit at the hip with the location. You know, so these two are getting on a collision course. Please yes, course. in some ways, in some ways. So uh, as I mentioned, I mean, that's part of the benefit of design build is that we can work through that together with the design builder. So um, just a reminder that the contract that we would agree to um, initially, the only thing we agree to is a percentage markup, which they which they they submit with their RFP, right? Um, we, we agreed to a percentage markup on construction costs and then the only, but the only real cost that we commit to at first is that validation period cost, which we negotiate. Then um, the, uh, the, which will be small and compared, it'll be a small portion of the contract, right? Of the overall budget for construction. And then it'll be later in the process that we will, uh, be agreeing to a guaranteed maximum price, which is the construction contract. That's when it becomes a construction contract. So the first agreement is really for this validation period, which may, part of that validation period may be helping select exact property lines or, or decide orientation of buildings, things like that. And if the property takes longer to get, um, most of our finalists have a pretty good plan in place to get uh, to make progress and get things done in the interim, uh, things like uh, public outreach and amenities, things like that could could be uh, could have progress made on them. But you are not wrong that there eventually will be a collision course with that if the property doesn't get there in time. Eventually, it would it would affect uh, it would affect progress with the contract. But uh, I think we have. Uh, I think we're in a good place. I think we have uh, a good plan to work with that, and it's actually going to be a benefit to have the design builder on board as we finish that process. I, I, I can't disagree with what you said. I just always have to try to put reality in there. And if they lay out a, a general idea, and then pretty soon there's another 1,000 feet of sewer and water and street that was not anticipated because of whatever, they ain't going to give it away. Yep, you are correct. Mind, I would just like to augment, and I wanted to thank specifically um, Marie and Spence as volunteers. I know it's tough to spend time on this, and, and you've uh, done a great job of being involved on behalf of the board. Uh, and I hope that the process that Heath and Robin and, and myself, and also Steve Worley from the uh, Public Works Department of the process, I think it's fair to say that we have three good or excellent shortlist candidates, and it's coming down to picking the best of the best. And I'm, I'm enthusiastic that the, uh, this committee is going to be able to recommend a really good designer builder at the December meeting. I, I fully agree with your comment, and I think you're very capable of reading and negotiating, doing those kinds of things. My job as one little person sitting up here saying, here's what I see that we ought to do, and it just is adding more. Uh, 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 flowers to the pot. That's great. 
Um, and then uh, we're obviously we're start we've started with the social media. I'm sure we all got Matt's Instagram post. I didn't. I don't have Instagram. But <clears throat> uh, the uh, the uh, that uh, it, we're looking forward to using that social media to get community input and also communicate out about the project. So um, that, that that's a great thing. And then uh, just as a as a fun feel good moment that I had, I was at an unrelated professional conference um, last week. Um, and it was a school board, so it was a, a school board uh, association, and uh, they have student ambassadors the school districts bring to the to those. And I did not find the Pasco ones, but I found the Richland student ambassadors. They happened by my booth in the trade show that we were doing, and uh, I took the opportunity to ask them if uh, to ask them. Uh, about the the aquatics facility and uh, and what kind of input they might have, and I was surprised how excited they were to talk to me about it. They were super excited to talk to me about it, and they definitely had opinions. And I just thought that was so fun, and just reminded me how fun this project is, and and uh, and how, how great it is. So I just wanted to share that that that, that the word is out. Yeah, yeah, the word is out, and the. People are excited, even even in Richland. <laughs> yeah. Okay. More, Mr. Moore said, if it might be possible, if we might do an insert just for a second to go back and, and do a financial. Darcy has some news. Um, I have some news that I know will be uh, heard with uh, sadness. I, <laughs> um, Monica is going to be has been an instrumental part of uh, getting things up and running for new ventures uh, and uh, moving things forward on the financial front and also just researching a lot of information and and uh, procedures and policy kind of data that has helped been helpful for all of us and she is going to be leaving the city of Pasco I'm sad to say and going elsewhere and so I wanted to let all you know and tell her thank you for the work that she's done it's been very appreciated by me thank you and so well, Monica, we wish you the best and we'll miss you. Well, there will always be change, won't there? <laughs> yes, yes. That's so true. Just make it the right change. I'll be at the red and cutting. <laughs> oh, yes. It sounds good. <laughs> yes, we wish her the best as well. Absolutely. Matt, could you walk us through the board meeting schedule? Just. Uh... Yes, uh, and just do, still plan, of course, in the coming year, uh, the, the, the ones in January through April are to remain unchanged. Um, because of the, uh, the, the recommendation, uh, or the, the, we, I think we are, what we would like to do is a special meeting in lieu of the regular meeting in that the decision for the designer builder is coming. Uh, what the question mark is whether or not December 12th or an alternate date might be more available. I've been trying to find what schedules might match with folks the most. And I particularly important since that does the designer builder uh, involves Marie and Spence uh, specifically. Spence has a little bit of challenge with December 12th as a meeting as well as December 15th. One of the other options that's been thrown around is Wednesday, December 13th is a preferred option at four o'clock. So I'm, I guess I'm asking if we, since we're going to probably do a special meeting anyway, and not do a meeting on December 19th, uh, the, whether or not Wednesday to the December th the 13th would be uh, agreeable by all or most of the board members uh, for, for our special meeting. That's for the first. I'll, I'll make it work. Spence, Marie, and then I'm, I also ask staff, too, if that would work. Uh, I see a nod from Darcy, Mr. Ferguson. Uh, Wednesday, December 13th at 4 p.m.? <laughs> Jesse and I know uh, uh, also uh, uh, John Funfar indicated he'd be able to do that as well and I actually also asked the clerk if he, she or a representative would be available reminder that there will be a, another meeting starting at 5 p.m. 
Actually, is it, it five? five I think it's actually six. Is it? Six o'clock. Set at five. So yeah. Good. Okay. So, so that brings the other point. If we did do it on the Wednesday, December thirteenth, we would need to be clear of this place adequately before the six o'clock meeting. So, if we ran an hour or up to no more than an hour and a half on that Wednesday, December thirteenth, uh, we could be able to use this space and televise that as well. So my suggestion, Mr. Morissette, is setting a special meeting for Wednesday, December 13th to have two items on the agenda, that selection of a designer builder, and then also adoption of the, of the budget for 2024 would be the two items uh, we would want to put on the agenda. Will we have our other regular business on that day as well? No, the ten tendency would be able to defer those, and talking with staff, we would be able to defer those things until the January meeting. Do it, and then that also uh, means that we don't, uh, not by not doing December 19th, everybody can enjoy the Christmas holidays uh, uh, more easily. Okay, well. Executive session. We don't have an executive session plan, so we can check that off. So we will, it is 5.02. And we will adjourn and see everybody here December the 13th at 4 p.m. Thank you.